right, kicks over. Beautiful. All right, Scott PDX here. It's working on the 450 a little bit. I think it's time to go for a ride. Ugh. Yuck. Portland weather. Ugh. All right, YouTube. This is Scott PDX. I was going to go for a ride, but I don't think so. What do you think, Penny? Is today a good day for a ride? Well, it's a good day to go look for rats, huh? It's always a good day to go for look for rats. So, Portland wintertime. Sometimes this is what you get. You can go for a ride. It's in the 40s, I think. Instead, I got some projects in the shop. I think I'll work on that today instead. Okay, so there's the 450 back inside the shop. Look at this. Ooh, KTM 300. I should be riding it today in the rain, but I'm not. Instead, taking care of a few projects, such as why this light stopped working. I'm inclined to think that the problem is a ballast that's bad. So, on this video today, we're going to change a ballast out on a fluorescent light fixture. I know this has nothing to do with motorcycles, and so if you're looking for a motorcycle video, this is probably not going to be really exciting for you. But uh, other people may have interest in it, and I need to figure out how to do more movies like this. So, here we go. Let's give it a try. So, what this is, is a replacement ballast for a fluorescent light fixture. I picked this up at Home Depot. It was right about $20, I think. Now, I'm just guessing on the fact that this is a bad ballast. I've had lights like these go out before, and more often than not, it's typically a bad ballast. So, we're going to give that a try first. So, there's our replacement ballast. I uh, also need a screw gun. Take the light fixture apart. It's always handy to have a pair of lineman's pliers. I got these little wire strippers. I love these wire strippers. These are the best things to have. They're so much better than the uh, old style strippers, but any kind of a wire stripper will work. Uh, I know from a fact I'm going to need a little wrench. Need some of these little wire nuts also, so I got some of those on hand as well. Put those right there. Tink. Drop those on the floor later. Okay. So let's start with taking this light apart. First thing, you want to take out the bulbs. Of course, before starting this, you know, make sure that you can test your bulbs. See if it's uh, the bulbs that are the problem or the light fixture. Typically, you can tell a burnout fluorescent bulb because this end of it will be discolored. The darker the discoloration, the more that, uh, that it's been burnt out. These particular bulbs are uh, grow light bulbs. See how they say uh, plant and aquarium. So it's probably blurry, but uh, they make a weird kind of purple light that's kind of cool. Okay, so to start with, we're going to take apart the ballast. See, there's a screw there. See, there's one down here. Let's see. Before I get in there, most important thing of all, <laughs> unplug the stupid light. Speaking of which, uh, I'm not an expert, I'm not a professional at this. Uh, if you do this, you do it at your own uh, risk. If you don't feel comfortable playing around with electrical things, don't do this. I've done enough home electrical things that I feel okay with it, but just be cautious. All right. So here we have the inside of the light. So I forgot to mention one other tool that's kind of handy is a pair of wire cutters. There's all kinds of wire cutters out there. I kind of, uh, I like these ones. I got a lot of the Klein electrical tools. Oh, it's a little, a little dull there. But uh, their Klein tools are extremely good quality electrical, professional level electrical tools. So since I'm gonna get rid of the ballast, I wanna cut the wires close to the ballast so I have plenty of wire left over to work with. So cut that one there. The ones that have wire nuts on it are just going to pull the wire nuts off. 
see. Actually, I'll leave that one on there. Let's see, this white one doesn't go to the ballast, so I won't mess with that. Again, I'm double checking, make sure that the thing is unplugged. <laughs> cut those. And then we'll cut these ones here. Okay, so now my ballast is not connected to anything. Looks like on this light, there's just a couple of uh, screws back here holding it together. I think there's nuts on them, they're probably going to spin on me. Alright, so there's my ballast. So again, comparing the ballast, they are different shapes. Fortunately, they still fit in here. This one feels a little heavier. I'm guessing this is a magnetic ballast. And this is an electronic one, which means that this one should have better output in the cold, which these lights are going in a greenhouse, so that's good. But mainly, they work, and that's the most important thing. Hopefully. We'll find out if this works after I do all this work. So, take your ballast, your new ballast, and spread all these cables out. You're going to need the cables ungoobered here. Straighten them out. So, like I said, uh, I don't, these aren't going to fit in the same mounting holes. If I compare the mounting holes, you can see that they're way off, like four inches off. But fortunately, there must be some standards here because I noticed on this light that there's an extra set of holes here. And fortunately, I looked earlier and I think it's going to fit. So, let's take a look here. Okay, so I've got my ballast kind of hand tied it in here. Here's my little wrench here to tighten it up. All right, so now my ballast is mount mounted in here. So now I need to wire it up. It's right here, it's really small lettering, you're not going to see it. And uh, you want to refer to that wiring diagram for your individual ballast. Uh, for this one, I happen to know that the wires are pretty darn close. Down here I've got blue ones on this end, and they actually go to the blue ones in the ballast. And I've got red ones, and they go to the red ones in the ballast. So that makes things easier. The white neutral on this ballast, which is going to the pull cord, I just know for a fact on this one gets connected to this white wire also. I noticed that on the last one, the ballast itself did not have an extra white wire, which is a neutral. This is a 110 system, so it's a neutral. White is always neutral on 110. But uh, I don't know why the ballast didn't have one before, but I'm going to use the one on the ballast this time. So we're going to connect up our neutral line. It's going to use the existing wire nuts. You're going to see there's lots of extra wire length. I'm keeping the length in here. I don't think it hurts. And it's just easier to deal with that way. Okay, next one I'm going to hook up is going to be the hot that I cut earlier. This is where these wire strippers come in real handy. Watch this. Put it on the wire size, boom, I'm stripped. Oh, sorry about that. All right, so these two, we're just gonna pinch together. Let's see. I'll have an extra wire nut. Let's see if this small one will fit. Probably, yeah, it might fit. So when you're using the wire nuts, it's always handy to squish them down nice and good so they fit. This is where lineman's pliers are real nice. These are just overkill electrical or overkill regular pliers, but you can really put a lot of force on them. Okay, yeah, that fits good. So that's holding on the black. So I've got my power set up. So now let's wire up these lights. The ends with the ballast already have the uh, wire stripped. The ends that I cut, of course, don't have strips. So we'll go through, we'll cut those. Uh, cutting about a half inch or so on these. Let's, let's just strip all these real fast. 
case anybody's wondering, uh, these are the company is Ideal, and they're called the Stripmaster. Stripmaster. Okay, so the blues to the blues and the reds to the reds on this end. Okay, so got my reds, got my blues. Now these yellow ones, they're going to come down at the other end. Now the reason I know that is that I look at this, and this little there's a little diagram here. I know you can't see it, but it, it tells you all that. So I'm going to route these down. On these ballasts, you know, make sure everything goes underneath these little protection pieces because the reflector is going to come on here. You don't want to have a cable up there. You know, so everything goes underneath those things. So you can see how simple that was for the wiring. It's mostly just follow the wiring diagram, and but for the most part, on most of these ballasts that I've changed, and I've, I've changed other ones besides for these particular grow lights, uh, it's the same setup. You know, there's typically a, a blue and a red at the end and a different color. It's typically you just match the colors. I can tell you though that when we went to buy this ballast, that it's harder to find these ballasts than it used to be. So it seemed easier for us instead of buying a whole new fixture just to replace the ballast. And I know from experience that it's pretty simple to do. And the ballast, were, again, they were like $18. Uh, a four foot uh, replacement fixture was about $18 also, but none of them had reflectors. I mean, we kind of like the reflector and, and these ones are nice. They kind of got a little uh, metal, shiny metal around them, diamond plate look to them. So they're kind of cool. So it's easier just to fix them. And it's kind of fun fixing stuff instead of just buying stuff. I, I hate throwing stuff away when you can fix it instead. So, so that's what we did. All right, now for the moment of truth, does it work? So, put everything back together. Make sure your wires are all underneath here. This is real sharp, it'd be easy to cut them. So we're just gonna be kind of careful here. Let me check, make sure I don't have any pinched wires anywhere. Looks pretty good. So, we've got that cleaned up. Let's put some bulbs in it. Just kind of taking this opportunity also just to clean everything off. One thing I noticed about these particular lights is the ends here just really were kind of kind of chintzy and cheesy. Fit in here and then you kind of grind them around till you get a good connection. It just sounds like you're breaking the bowls. Cleanish. All right. Is it going to work or not? Now for the moment of truth. Hey, look at that. We've got light. So I know that was a silly project and probably something that you'll never run into, but for those people out there that have a bad ballast, bad fluorescent light, maybe they might want to learn how to do this. So hopefully the video helped a little bit and uh, next time hopefully I'll have something more interesting, a more interesting project for you or back on the bike riding somewhere when it's not a rainy miserable day out. So until next time, this is Scott PDX. We'll see you later. Ciao. Woo.